Hi, Kenneth Tex here with the last in a series of videos on installing Linux from scratch on a Raspberry Pi 400. So as you can see from the screen, I've booted up the um, Raspberry Pi 400 from the boot partition that was on the SD card. And the first thing I'm going to do is log in as the root. And um, what I'll do is type in a date command to show that the NTP server has um, set the correct date and time and in fact you can see here that the um, NTPD server has been started just before the SSH server so it looks like the NTP is the first thing that's um, run after the, um, internet, uh, the network has been brought up so, as I say, there's not much we can do here. We've got wget now. Um, we've installed the NTPD, obviously, and the SSH server. So I'm just going to check my IP address that I've set. And it's 200, as you can see there. 192.168.0.200. So, in theory, I'll log out of this because there's no point in being in that. In theory, I should be able to go to a command prompt which I've got here and I've also got a browser here with the last page so this is on a different machine now and what I should be able to do is to SSH as my uh, as root sorry into that IP address now this might fail because I use 200 for various things yeah it has um, it actually tells me a command there to delete it from the um, known hosts file. So I'll copy and paste that and I'll rerun that command. Type in the root's password. I should get in. Yes, I have. So that permit root login has worked. And if I just do uname minus a to get the details about the system, you can see I'm into the Raspberry Pi 400 uh, host. There's the kernel name that I set and confirmed also by the architecture as well. So what I'll do first of all is go to the sources um, and then BLFS. And the first package I'll install um, is I'm just going to do GPM and links. And once I've done those two, I'll show the um, changes to make the boot completely from the USB um, drive without the um, SD card in, installed into the Raspberry Pi. So um, I'll do GPM first, it's the smaller of the two and it means I'll have some sort of mouse access which will be useful for copying and pasting stuff on the terminal. So let's get that one up first and I'll get that links up ready as well. Right, looks like the uh, magnification's gone down. So I'll just make that a little bit bigger. So copy the link address. Just check my current directory. wget. Okay. So the this um, falcon behaves a bit differently. Although I've copied the link address, it hasn't pasted it into the um, center click button. It's just retained what I last highlighted in the terminal. So what I'll have to do is right click and paste. Alternatively, I should have been able to do this. Let me check to see if that works. Center click, yeah, that's worked. Okay, so I've got GPM. I'll expand it. Change into it. And, oh, there's a download. Uh, patch download here as well so I'll just get hold of that go back up one just check my location again get that patch that's okay go back into the GPM directory so I'm in the source directory now um, I'll have to check that the mouse interface is set it probably is um, in the kernel because uh, it seemed like just about everything was built so I can grab that, look for that option in sources, 
Linux Raspberry Pi dot config and you can see that mouse input dev is set to yes so that's okay so what we do now is just run these commands here Um, I assume the fact that GPM has been patched, this autogen has to be rerun to, I think it recreates a new configure uh, script. Okay, that's built and now I'm going to run these install commands. And that's installed. We've just got a little bit of configuration to do. So um, we need to come out of the GPM source directory, remove it, don't need it anymore, and we'll go into the BLFS boot scripts directory and copy and paste that. So that's the start script, um, the boot scripts, the start us and shutdown scripts installed. We've now got a configuration uh, file to create and we need to modify this and once again this is one of these things that I don't modify very often um, but when I do I always forget what to set here so I'm going to go with examples that are there and if they don't work I'll have to consult my Linux oops my Linux from scratch machine so I'll just type in the example, which probably should work. I'll save that. Um, as it says here, you can find out the protocol by running this command here. So there's, these are the protocols. Um, IMPS2. It's a fairly generic mouse with uh, a wheel, two or three button mouse. So it should work in most cases. So what I'm going to do now is start that um, daemon off so that the program actually runs. If I show the um, terminal, If I move the mouse around at the moment, there's nothing happening. If I click the buttons, there's nothing happening. So what I shall do now is to start the um, daemon off. GPM start. It started OK, so if I now go back to the um, terminal, you'll see straight away there's a, a white square there already, which is the cursor, and if I move the mouse around, you can see it's um, tracing as I move the mouse. I can do things like double-click words, and it will highlight them. I can center-click, and it will paste them into the terminal. 
so you can see how useful this will be. Um, I can actually log on and yeah you can see that's worked as you can see just highlight and center click to copy so that's worked fine so I'll go back to the terminal and I can now shut down that tab as GPM is installed now one thing I omitted to do before I installed GPM, in fact if I extract it again, uh, go back to, where am I, CD sources, so if I extract the GPM, it's still there, oh no we've got a patch, that's right, and go into it. Now if I just time how long it takes to make this uh, make let's time all no okay it needs that uh, auto conf doesn't it? Let's just run time auto conf alright okay Obviously don't know how to use this. Let's get the instructions back up. Uh, oh, sorry, it was autogen, not autoconf. So autogen.sh. So I'll just time this. Okay. Right, so maybe that's what this patch does. Let's run that first. And then try the... Oh, I know what I haven't done. I haven't done the leading because it's a script. Uh, let's start again. So time auto dot auto gen. So I'll just time how long this takes. So that took 15 seconds, and if I time how long it takes to make, okay, I do need to run the configure. Well, let's leave it at that. That took 15 seconds. Now, the problem is the Pi boots up um, in what I would call like a default fail safe um, mode where it um, defaults to a, clock, a low clock speed of 600 megahertz so we're not getting the full impact of the 1.8 gigahertz therefore what you've just seen compiling GPM has been running about a third of the speed that the processor is capable of and we can actually see um, what speed the um, processor is running at or at least the, each of the cores by looking at some uh, sys information on the hardware um, so let's look at uh, let's look at all the CPUs for argument's sake they should all be the same um, this path drills down to um, the frequencies that are currently active on each single core. So if I display that, you'll see uh, this figure is in um, kilohertz, so it's 600,000 kilohertz, which is 600 megahertz, which is 0.6 gigahertz. So you can see it's not running at full speed. Um, now to change that, and this is something that would need to be put into a startup script, you wouldn't need a shutdown script. Um, what you can do is, um, well, if we can view it first of all, there's a um, a scaling governor, a variable called a scaling governor, um, which we can look at, which is also under sys devices system. Oh, too many forward slashes there. Not that it would matter. CPU 
CPU frequency um, policy zero scaling governor and you can see it's set to power save so that's why the um, clock speed is so low and that, that I don't know if that's just green credentials or if it's just a fail safe to make sure the uh, Pi can boot but doesn't or has a reduced chance of overheating if for example the heat sinks not attached uh, or not working properly I don't know but that's how it boots by default to change this what we can do is we can echo the word uh, performance to that oops that location and what that does that will switch the machine into performance you can see it's now says performance and if I recall the command to view this scaling frequency you can see it's now gone to 1.8 million kilohertz which is 1.8 gigahertz basically so now we've got the Raspberry Pi running at full speed um, and as I say this is the sort of thing you might want to add in as a startup script for when the um, machine starts and the best way to do that would be to have a look at the startup scripts that the um, BLFS team have used and just um, crib one of them I'd suggest you go for one I can't think of any off the top of my head, but one that would only need to be switched on at, at, at power on. You, you don't need to return this to uh, the other value, the default value on power off. It's no point. Um, the power's going down. It makes no odds what, what speed the machine's at when it's uh, going to be switched off in a few milliseconds time. So that's something to worth, you know, worth bearing in mind. I've set it manually. I've written a little script in the past to do this. Um, to automatically set a, a governor, scaling governor. There are other ones, I can't remember the other ones now. Um, no, I can't think of the other ones off the top of my head, but they're in the kernel. If you look at the power part of the kernel configuration, you'll see the other names there. But performance is adequate, that's what the Pi runs at normally. So if I now um, delete this directory, and uncompress that tarball again, go back into GPM and rerun the auto gen. You'll see it won't take 15 seconds now, it will be a lot quicker. While up there is five seconds, which is what you'd expect. It's now running three times as fast as it was um, at its full speed. So that's just something I forgot to do. Luckily, GPM wasn't a big package. It took, it did take three times long, as long, or nearly three times as long. But luckily, it was a small um, package anyway. So for the last time, I'll remove the GPM package, and now it's time to fetch the links program. Uh, copy link address. There's some optional utilities here. Uh, not recommended or mandatory so I'll leave them for the time being obviously if you want to be able to use zip and unzip um, and so on or you decode then you'd need to install the other packages and then to rebuild it um, right okay paste so I'll extract links change into it and we'll proceed to run um, yep just run the standard configure we haven't installed any other packages so it's pointless even looking really
Right, that's built. There's no test suite like there wasn't for GPM, so it's just an install to run. And that's that. Some configuration information here. So let's run this one in. And another one for multi multibyte characters. Um, links handles following values of the default editor by adding cursor positioning arguments. So there's all these options here. And if you want to save cookies between sessions, you can set this option as well. And as it says, there's loads of, other, loads of other options in the links.cfg file. So that is links installed. And to run it, you can just put in a web address and uh, we've got the BBC home page up uh, let's go to the news let's see what news there is so there's something about unsafe cladding uh, COVID that challenged this country and so on Trump impeachment trial and so on. So that's uh, links, just do Q to quit, answer yes and that's it. So I've got internet access on the terminal, it means if I go to the terminal, it means in theory I could carry on building more out of the BLFS book. Um, uh, Linux from scratch.org uh, so if I go to the BLFS book and read online select the um, latest and so go to a random chapter lib linear and you can see I've now got the option of highlighting the address I could go to another terminal with Alt F2, log in there, and I'll just stick this in the temp directory, I don't need it, but I could do wget space, centre click, and I fetch that file, and I could then proceed by alternating between the two screens to copy and paste the instructions. They're hard to read because they don't stand out with specific colours. Um, but you can see if you read carefully, you can actually copy and paste stuff and uh, continue installing Beyond Linux from scratch. So one final thing I'm going to do, well, one penultimate thing I'm going to do actually is, um, first of all, I'm going to reboot just to make sure all the demons start correctly. Um, well, yeah, you can see there's an, actually an error message there saying kind of access the hardware clock, and that's because there isn't one. So in theory, that boot script should be removed because it's not doing anything. Or maybe you could, that that is the boot script. Thinking about it, you could modify it to um, maybe uh, change the frequency of the processor. So here we are, it's just rebooting it again. I just want to make sure the GPM starts up. And yes, it has, and I can move it. Yep, that's fine. And I've got access to links. Uh, yeah, that's fine. 